This week we have seen God doing amazing things around about London, around, around our hearts, our feelings, and our emotions, in lives of people that we know, in lives of people that we don't know. But the most important thing is that we don't take what he has done as the set standard. That's only a starting point. Is that okay? Yeah. So we're going to come into this today through that lens. Is that okay? Yeah. We're going to go to Mark really quick. Mark 16. I'm going to go to from verses 4 to 7 for the ADD. And um, we're going to leave it there for a minute. Is that okay? Yeah. We might quote other things. It depends how much you pull it out of me. Mark 16 verse 4 says... But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. I'm so tempted to stay there, but I'm going to continue. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen, exclamation point. He's not here, period. See the place where they laid him, period. But go, coma. <laughs> Tell his disciples and Peter, he's not escaping from my grace. He's going, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. So, like underline that one in, the, in your mind. And with this we close. There you will see him just as he told you. Lord, bring it out and kill everything that is hunting us down. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated and we're going to have a good one. I might think about this one as an OO Sunday because <clears throat> I've been in bed most week. Too much prayer. Sometimes I was praying about what did I do? to be in bed and then God with his grace cleans it out and tells me no I just want you to concentrate context the resurrection today we celebrate the resurrection of Christ and we could keep that as as a calendar adjective you know we can say resurrection Sunday that could be an adjective that could be a description something that we put in the calendar, something that we have done really great things during the week that would describe that we believe and what we believe and what religion is for us. But we could take it further. Resurrection is not an adjective. It's a person. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Yeah. So today we're not celebrating the fact of someone that stopped breathing, came back to life and walked among us. That actually defies several of the laws of nature afterwards. We're celebrating that a man, that promise came through. Some of us, maybe all of us, have promised at some point in our lives something that we didn't come through with. From young to old, we promised we didn't come through. And everyone said, but Jesus is not like us. He's steadfast, unmovable, always abounding like he has called us to be. He has called us to be just like he is. He has called us, he inspired us to be unmovable. And sometimes we want to be unmovable through our own strength and our own knowledge and our own standing, our own pedigree, what well, we could handle, our own strength. But God, in His grace, called us to Him. He called all things to Him so we can move in that matter. We're called to move and be unmovable. I love when the Bible, in another part, this is not part of the preaching, so just stay with me. The Bible calls that everything that should be shaken, should be shaken. That can be shaken, should be shaken. Wow. How many things in your life are shaking now? That tells you how near you are to a next thing. God bless you. Don't worry. You can say amen. That's for free. The resurrection of the Lord. And, we, and that's not context today as, as we are prophesying this. But if we can add three more parts to that is how do we understand the resurrection? How do we stand under? Let me just translate the word. Understanding. How do we stand under the resurrection? Is the resurrection our top? Is it, is it like what defines us? Because our generation and the world now doesn't want to be defined by anything. But the Lord gave us a ceiling that protects us. That protects us from the heat in the day and the cool in the evening. If you 
when I look at that possibility. Our ceiling is the resurrection. And from there, we inhabit with God. We don't have to look anything further. We just have to look inside of the resurrection. What is our role and what does it mean? We have taken the resurrection so lightly, so mystical, so ephemeris. It's just like a dust. And then all of a sudden, we are left with nothing out of understanding the resurrection. Yeah, he resurrected. And we just closed the book. Ah, oh, man, hallelujah. And we walk on almost all the time as empty as we walked in and through that. Because we don't internalize what does that mean. The third thing is that we're going to talk, and maybe this is the context of today. What does it mean, resurrection? Does it mean only salvation? Why? Why are we saved? Why he promised that he would redeem us through his death and resurrection? Why? Does it feel good? Of course it does. But maybe we have to stress on the why. And the four and from and the from. And I will add one more if you have space to write. He is going ahead. The Bible says that he's going ahead. Do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. He, he's risen. He's not here. He's going ahead of you. Today we celebrate all these beautiful things, and they feel very fluffy. And if you're very religious, you will feel all classy by coming today to church. But if you are really in a relationship, today you're wanting to lean in to understand a little bit more what the resurrection means now. Now, in your feelings, in your debts, in your relationships, in the way that you blink, in the way that you breathe, your anxiety levels. You, you want to know, like you really want to know. Because resurrection didn't stop there. He is the resurrection. So it didn't stop with an action, a situation. It is not 2,000 and some years ago. It is today. Resurrection is moving today. So resurrection, as resurrection is in the move, and we're able to stand underneath that revelation, we get new life. We get strength, wisdom. We get nearer. And not only that, he didn't only come to just come out of a tomb. He came to overcome. Today we celebrate that as well. He overcame. But what did he overcame? We can summarize in several things. Death, ha. Huh? But what is death? Because most of us in this room will have a question mark on that. Some of us have been dead and somehow brought to life through a miracle, through medical assistance. Some of us, it's, it's in this room right now. That's a reality. And sometimes we sit in a room and we take these words so lightly that we don't understand. We also think about it as he overcame pain. Because in our generation, we have been preached that, that he came for our pain. But we don't see that he pursued pain for the grace of us being free. If your kid is one day you have a kid, if your kid is going to be in danger, and they're about to hurt themselves, it is a natural instinct to put your hand onto it. You don't think about it. Any parents in the room that can say yes, amen, can leave me alone on this one? It's an instinct because love does that. So he didn't overcome only death and pain and the sorrow that should be ours of the distance. He came to understand that our hearts because of our sin, we're distant and in debt, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. He came to overcome all of that. So all your emotional distance, your spiritual distance, and your physical distance from God and from what is from Him, He came to die for that. That's good news right there. So if you're struggling like we were seeing with depression, 
that is not that is not your lot if you're struggling with anything physical that is not what you're supposed to go home with and although it might go home with you that doesn't define you and your relationship with God how many times do we have to be reminded that his love overcomes all things he came to give us a gift to give us the gift of salvation he resurrected for what just to walk out and say ha I told you no he's not showing off resurrection means we have eternal life resurrection means he paid the pain he paid the pain that we cause into God's heart sometimes we don't see that what our transgressions our sins create in the heart of God is is pain sometimes we come because it is the right thing to do and we say Lord I didn't do the right thing but we forget by not doing the right thing we produce pain this is the light part of the sermon don't worry about it I'm gonna encourage you in a minute so today resurrection means that you're not guilty but are you gonna keep it there are you really gonna go home saying I'm not guilty resurrection booyah I win he wins and you're gonna brag about it you're gonna tag about it you're gonna just Instagram something about it or are you gonna say hey why have I been redeemed why did he resurrect it why did he sacrifice his life why do you have breath in my lungs why still wake up and have a conscience why I cannot stand injustice and this and that and the other why do I have that inside of me why am I being saved why because salvation is a treasure it's not only that fulfilling the law it's not him he just didn't die just to fulfill what needed to happen although it's part of it it's not only him giving his own own life like he he didn't do what you did or what I did thank God literally thank him he rose again he is risen and in that would stand but for what see the gospel cannot be kept out of what is real people walk around thinking that their thoughts it's righteousness when God says that our best day is like, like it's like rags of injustice in days like today that they found in the tomb the rags laying around full of blood and our brokenness and our defeat Jesus stood tall and left the head and he's gonna teach us why we find Jesus moving ahead because Jesus doesn't stay surprised of the things that we have lived he's not surprised so yesterday you had like a selfish a selfish thought I had one who, who had a selfish thought yes yesterday let's pray for the ones that didn't put their hands they're lying <laughs> amen we bless you don't worry about it we cover you don't worry about it Lord fire no I'm joking <laughs> No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's just to wake you up. Oh, fire. What? The Lord wants us to find him on the road. Jesus is the ultimate map. Salvation is, is what triggers us to be able to relate to God from now. We don't experience salvation when the rapture happens and we go to heaven. We have not been called to that distance. We have been called to experience salvation from now salvation means I belong to so with Jesus stepping in and atoning us he says I value the law that's the first thing how do we find Jesus because he's ahead he's ahead of all of us sometimes we think we get Jesus since I'm thinking like I think I don't know if it happens to you I think like I know God God I know you and I'm like very very soon reminded that God is infinite mate so I I don't know you I'm sorry I was a bit stupid for me can we just rewind that one 
can start again. I want to know you, Lord. The Bible in Revelation says that to know God is for us eternity. So we will need eternity to get to know him. So that's, that's a different perspective. So I come to this wanting to understand where is he going? When he says really clear, he says like, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And he wants us to see him there. There you will see him just as he told you. It makes me wonder. So if Jesus came to fulfill the law for you and me to be free, and I know that in our generation, right now, there should be like bulls on fire there. The smell of burned meat should be filling this place. If we're going to go back into the old days, yeah? Are we going, we're going to do that? We're going to go too weird? Yeah, is that okay? Imagine, imagine you had tents, you had rooms. Some people would dropping dead because they were lying and they were pulled out. They were pulled out because they were lying. No, they were coming into church and playing cool, but they were lying with their lives. That's cool. We're in the context of having, having been deceived, betrayed. The feelings in the air are, are very strong. are very strong. I want us to sit down for a minute and say, maybe resurrection was not as easy as I think. Maybe you don't know who to trust. Maybe you don't know, you don't know what to think. Maybe you are doubting of your own strength or maybe your own feelings. Maybe God is asking us to take it back all the way in and say, what does it mean for you what I have done? Show me what it means and I'll show you what it produces. If it meant a lot, you will make a lot with it. If it settled you, you will be of settlement for others. If it gave you peace, you will be an agent of peace for others. If he helped you to lose what was dead ends in your life, you will be that person that will be able to trigger them and say, this extra, let's lose it that way. Are you with me? So when we see this, God wants us to understand that the resurrection is us standing underneath the law, but Jesus sufficed it first. Second, we have been given purpose. Third, It means that it not only gives us purpose, it explains that we have sinned and fallen, but with that, we brought or we have to be judged. And because of that, Jesus stepped in. That's ridiculous. See, Jesus came and stood in the middle and said, okay, I fulfill it. I'll cover your need and your failure. And with that, I'll make sure that death and the judgment of God stays away from your house. If God wants blood, I'll give mine. And God was that same blood. For God so loved the world that he gave his son as an atonement for you and me. So he went through all these things, all the rejection that you and me have gone through. He experienced it and he can help us. All the healing, all the needs that we have. He has been there. And he can provide it. All the needs that others have through you, he's there through you and he can provide them. So understanding and standing under the law means that we're not only given a purpose, we're not only brought to life through this judgment that God has seen suffice through Jesus, is actually saying that love has connected us, it has corrected us, it has encouraged us, and it has realigned us. So with that, we have to say, Lord, what is it that you demand? 
to make it simpler and to round it up. Jesus took the punishment so we can follow him on this road. And he goes ahead. You know that friend that does that good to you? You know that they help you on something and they remind you for 15 years what they did for you? Like, remember when I bought you a Snickers? You know, remember when I helped you to move houses? Remember, remember, remember? See, Jesus is not like that. God is not like that. He doesn't remind you what he has done for you. He goes ahead opening a way. He's not only the way. He goes ahead on the way and say, follow up. He's not underestimating us like religion does. He's saying you can follow up because I have walked with you. I have invested in you. My spirit is among you. I can do this. You can do this. I will reign over all things. And because of that, you can follow me. Let me clear the way. Let me make you understand that I have given you a heart made out of flesh and great in wisdom and in gifts that I want to display around the world, and I want this to display now. Follow me. He's going ahead. Go and tell everyone, eh? It's very clear. He says, you know what, but go. It's like, don't stay afraid. He says that being afraid is a possibility. Being in, in, in fear is a possibility of life. And if true be told, all of us have experienced that. But the reality of it is that that doesn't have to stop the wisdom of God, the gift of God, the resurrection of God in us. So we have been giving life. So us as a team, as a group, as a people, as a church, as a congregation, as, as a nation can walk forward in humility but in resurrection. We might have fallen and fallen short in every way. There's not one of us that doesn't need grace. But he goes ahead. Are you with me? So he says, you know, I go ahead. I take the punishment and I move on. So he teaches us with that. But he's trying, he's trying to underline something a bit more deep that I never saw and I saw this time. Jesus, he was going ahead. So we will see him. But he was going to. We want to catch up with him somewhere. He says, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. We learned a couple of weeks ago, or we were reminded maybe, that Galilee is like the entrance to the church. And if I, if you allow me to play a little bit with that, the entrance to a church, what is a church? Is it the building or is it the people? Go ahead, you will see him in the entrance to the people. Wow. The way you walk into the life of someone is only through Jesus. He said, go, and you will see him there just as he told you. Today, we don't only celebrate victory. We don't only celebrate redemption. That's for us. That's easy. Today we celebrate that we will see Jesus in the entrance to every heart, to every situation that surrounds us, to every community that is listening to this around the world or in this country. Wherever you are, you're in a prison cell or you are in the living room, that doesn't matter. Jesus is saying, my resurrection covers you and goes with you. I give you entrance to that piece of property, to that piece of heart. I give you entrance. I am the key. He is the key. He's the key to the treasure, the treasure of salvation. Mark 16 would say that the kingdom of God is, is like a treasure that was found on the land. And the owner sold everything he had. He gave his own life to be able to grab it. The kingdom of God. We have a treasure. Resurrection has delivered unto us the treasure of salvation for us to share it. For us to be able to redeem not only the time lost, but the people that are not known by God. We want people to be known by God, not only know about God. When we go into the door of a heart, we don't want them to know information. We want them to know that God knows them. We want to talk with authority through the love that we have received. 
through the wisdom that we have received, through the healing that we have received. Use all things that you have received to describe at the door. He says, I knock. And if you open, I walk through. Resurrection means I'm knocking. I'm with you. God is knocking. It doesn't matter how many years we have been walking with God. Resurrection still is still incomplete in our hearts. You have not seen the utmost of that resurrection in your life. This is not a concept. This is a transition from darkness to life. This is a relationship. This is from glory to glory. Today, this is not only the World Cup of Christianity. This, <laughs> this is not our biggest celebration. This is not when everyone is looking in. This is not only the, the moment in, in the year that most people actually profess Christ for the first time or come back to Christ. Maybe that's the, that's the story for many of you. This is what happens, yes, but that's not it. There's more to it. And God today, through this revelation, through this resurrection that we celebrate, he's trying to say, hey, I want to bring you to the Galilee. I want to bring you to Galilee, and with this we close. Galilee is the place where he multiplied the fish and the bread. This is the place that he said, come to me. Come to me, all those of you that are tired and worried but it's also the place of the storms it's also the place of the storms that took the faith away from the disciples that were walking with Jesus it is the place where the storms also provoked Peter to believe harder and say call me so he's wanna he's wanting to reach at us in this resurrection day in this day that we say hey you are risen in this day that we're celebrating all that he wants us to complete a little bit more the panorama. He wants us to understand that he's calling us to Galilee. He's calling us not to only be celebrating that he just stood out of the tomb and just went through. He's wanting us to follow him through the multiplication and the storms, through the need and through the abundance. He's wanting us to develop that skin as Christians, as believers, as disciples of Christ that not only profess a calendar date, but profess the power that lives in us because he died and he rose again. So today we don't come with fancy words. We come on the way to Galilee. We come in that way of saying, hey, if storms come, I will follow. I have to get to you. I will see you. He says, there you will see him just as he told you. I will see him in power. He is sufficient in my need. He is that healing that I'm craving. He is that provision that I'm in longing from for a long time. He is that and so much more. I will see him as he told me I will. But I have to go to Galilee. Resurrection without Galilee didn't exist. There's a reason. He didn't want flimsy calendar Christians to be filling the earth. He wanted Christians that could go through a good storm, walk on water, almost dip it out, and then come back up and preach to 3,000 in power. He wanted Christians that could say, hey, you know what? Even although I don't have proofs, I will follow the testimony of you all the way to the place I almost drowned. That could have been Peter because he mentioned Peter. Remember that. Tell the disciples and Peter to go back to where, where he almost drowned. And maybe that's you. Maybe that's you in your faith. I just don't want to stretch it that much, but maybe you feel like you're drowning. And God has you. But he has to take you through Galilee again. Your resurrection smells to Galilee. Your miracle smells to Galilee. Some of us have gone through difficult storms. But hey, every resurrection needs a Galilee. As we close it, 
I believe the Lord has spoken. All of us have a different Galilee. All of us have to say, God, I remember, don't take me through that again. I don't know if your prayer life, you have said, Lord, thank you for bringing me through that. Don't put me through that again. I don't know if you've been tempted once to pray like that. I've been, and I actually prayed it. He ignored it. He gave me another Galilee. But the important thing is that he's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He's the man of Galilee. He's the one that walks upon the waters. He's the one that came out of that tomb. He's the one that went ahead. He's the one that provides. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the one that can, can forgive. He's the one that will challenge the ones that accuse you and say what is easier, to forgive a sin or to heal. He's the man of Galilee. On Resurrection Sunday, let us not lift our heads to what the calendar says or what would be normal. Let's take this opportunity today to, um, to open the tomb of our hearts to see what God wants to bring out of that tomb. Resurrection today has the same power over your life that it had then. So maybe there are things that God wants to bring out of that tomb and he might take them through a Galilee moment. But to go to Galilee, you got to come out of the tomb. You got to go, but go, but go. You got to put this redemption to the test. With simplicity of heart, these women were so afraid, but they said, we will follow. We will obey. The law and the disobedience will not tackle down the experience, the hope, the faith. Today, God is asking us to experience redemption and resurrection on the way to a storm and multiplication. He's wanting us to walk tall and trust in Him to have mercy on us. If today God has spoken to you, I want to ask you to join me in your feet if that's possible. If not, stay seated. <laughs> it's better. If anyone in this place wants prayer, we're going to have several people on both corners on the sides, at the other side of the columns, that can pray for you and with you. We're here for that. But as we, as we go back to worship, let us understand that what God is doing today, it is not giving us an excuse to continue living or to do whatever we want. He's saying, I've paid for you have the strength and the wherewithal to walk in a new way again. He's saying, in the beginning, I created you with purpose. And maybe you have fallen under the law because you have sinned. But he's saying, even though you have fallen, I paid for your fall so you can go back to the original. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I pray for, for each one of us, Lord, in this room that are walking through resurrection moments, Lord, but on our way to Galilee. Father, we are walking in this place, Lord, with victories in our hands, Lord. But maybe we have kept some of the failures, the disappointments in our pockets, Lord. Maybe we still have a little bit of that tomb in us, Lord. And today, Lord, we are reminded that you came to empower, Father, your purpose in our life. It was not for us to be free and free indeed for the sake of us. But it was because you needed us to grow free. So many will know 
You're calling us to go and to go through storms and multiplication. Father, you have calling, called us to actually exceed and experience your beauty, Father, and your provision. Father, you have called us. And sometimes, Lord, we are so limited. Father, sometimes we have not been taught how to, or we have not been modeled how to believe and believe again. We know how is to give up. We know what is to give in. But Father, today, your resurrection reminds us that you paid the price for us to be free and free indeed. That you have called us to meet you on the way. That we will see you how you explain to us you are. You are great and gracious beyond understanding. But Father, in your redemption and in your correction, Father, we will walk to our Galilees, Lord. Father, we won't expect and we won't only move in the pleasure and in the multiplication. Father, we will not be satisfied by those. But like Paul, we want to just share with you those pains of being crucified in you. Crucified in the truth that we don't live behind our longings, but we are walking towards our Galilee. We're not going to forget the places that we almost drowned. But we're going to use the knowledge of who took us by the hand exactly when we needed it. And Father, we'll take it back to Galilee. Let every storm know that there's a disciple coming. There's a lover of this Christ. This Christ, this redeemed, this anointed one, this Messiah. There's one coming. And Father, I believe in this place there are several, several of us going back to Galilee. Father, it's our prayer. Father, that you see us as a disciple and not only as a believer. Father, we want to walk. We want to talk. We want to go and see you in the midst of it all exactly how you said we would. If there's anyone in this place that today needs to reconcile with God, walk back to God, if there's anyone in this room that today you might be wanting to make a decision for that Jesus that walks with you, that walked ahead of you, that didn't only pay a price for you to be alive, that didn't make this a religious date, but he dated you for eternity through his blood. He said, I am for you and I am with you and I go ahead. If there's anyone in this room, please don't go from this place without talking with one of us. In the back or in the sides, we're going to be praying for you. Amen. Amen.